So Donald, you know, is great at, at the uh, one-liners, but he's a chaos candidate, and he'd be a chaos president. He would not be the commander-in-chief we need to keep our country safe. Jeb doesn't really believe I'm unhinged. He said that very simply because he has failed in this campaign. It's been a total disaster. Nobody cares. Well, and that's uh, the way it went last night between those two, uh, the Donald and uh, Jeb Bush uh, mixing it up. Joining us on the line right now for his assessment of what happened at the GOP debate, Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard, also a Fox News contributor, good friend of this program. Hello, Steve. Hey, Brian. How are you? I'm doing very well. You're here with Scotty Nell Hughes, who's in for Larry O'Connor. Okay, so... Hey, Scotty. Who, uh, Hi, Steve. So who won, who lost, and who should go home? Well, you know, I, I think if, if you had to declare winners, I would say probably Cruz, Rubio, and Donald Trump, almost by, by uh, virtue of the fact that nobody else did anything to stand out. Um, I think... Anytime you have a status quo debate that that benefits the front runner, Trump is is the clear national front runner, and he, he seemed a little bit more in control. I mean, I, you know, I, I certainly wasn't impressed by Trump's knowledge of, of foreign affairs or mastery of the subject matter, but he was he was less prone to, to outbursts than he has been in previous debates or in his his TV appearances and well, speeches. And, now, now, Jeb Bush came on real strong. What's the game there? Look, I, th- I think that it might have been Jeb's best debate performance out of the five. Um, it was a very strong performance. The question was whether it was a breakout performance. I mean, you've got Jeb at 3 4 5% in these national polls, at, at 7% in New Hampshire where he's sticking his candidacy. Was there anything that happened last night where everybody said, I- I'm sort of giving Jeb Bush a second look despite the fact that I haven't been enthusiastic about him so far, and I just didn't see it. Well, you're looking at the top two leaders right now are Trump and Cruz. And we've heard these rumors that those in D.C., those in the Beltway are, are a little bit afraid of having a Trump at the top of the ticket or a Cruz. What is the thoughts right now as you're starting to go, well, maybe we might have a Trump Cruz ticket? How do you, you know, how do you get everybody on board with something that has those two names with it? Well, I, I'm not sure everybody would be on board if it was those two names, particularly if it were Trump at the top of the ticket. I mean, I do think that there's – and it's not just establishment types, uh, I should say. I mean, who would be nervous about Donald Trump at the top of, of the ticket? I mean, you have people like Mike Needham at Heritage Action who's been, uh, you know, an outspoken uh, agitator against the establishment and, uh, and other people who, who are just uncomfortable with Trump because Trump hasn't been a conservative for very long and doesn't seem to have much of a grasp of these issues beyond his, his – bromides and, and tough talk. Um, Cruz, I think, is altogether different. I think it's very interesting to watch the shift on Cruz. You have people who had been hostile to Cruz, I think, be a little more open to the possibility of a Cruz candidacy or a Cruz nomination because they're afraid of Donald Trump. Uh, it was interesting to see that they didn't really go at each other last night. Uh, on, the, on the one hand, that made a lot of sense because Cruz hopes to inherit Trump's supporters if Trump collapses, as everybody's now said for, for months. And, and Trump, being the, the clear leader, didn't have much interest in engaging in some kind of a scrap with Ted Cruz. But Steve, you know, it's been since the very beginning, since June, Trump has been at the top. It's been 41 percent. We're now seeing historical highs consecutively, unlike we've seen in candidates in the GOP before. So, you know, why, why what is it going to take to get naysayers who might not be necessarily big Trump fans or Cruz fans even at this point to get on board with him? What, nothing has has taken him down yet um when are we going to get over this idea of something taking him down and saying you know what maybe we should start trying to surround our base and actually start building it up to go against the other side yeah i don't i don't think you're going to have that point i mean i I think the people who are skeptical of trump are skeptical of trump for very specific reasons he doesn't know much he doesn't show much interest in the issues uh beyond his his sort of you know, generalities and and tough talk. I mean, I'm one of those people. I, I would never be a Donald Trump supporter. It just wouldn't happen. So you would vote? Um, would you vote for someone on the other side then? I would not support Trump for sure. I don't think I'd, I, I don't know what I would do in Maryland, so it doesn't really matter <laughs> anyway. Uh, but I, but there's no way I would vote for Donald Trump. I would, I would stay home or I would vote for a third party. I voted for the libertarian candidate in 1996, Harry Brown over Bob Dole. Uh, but I wouldn't support Trump. But didn't you also people criticize people, way. though, in 2012, the evangelicals that stayed home and wouldn't get behind Romney? I mean, weren't you one of those that said, you know, that wasn't necessarily smart either? I mean, what no, can people, no, what can Trump I, no, say? No, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't one of those. I mean, I wasn't one of those. 
why why can't we but what is it going to i know you said that he's not smart you are but actions speak louder than words and i don't care if it's trump or cruz or any of these conservatives it, what is it going to take to convince you is, is it that he that you need to get on board that that person's better than hillary clinton even ted cruz last night said anybody on that stage is better than hillary clinton yeah, I mean, look, I just think that Trump has has such a high hurdle to overcome with people who are skeptical of him because the way that he's running his candidacy, uh, I would argue, isn't doesn't make him a serious candidate. He's saying things that obviously, as you point out, I mean, he's forty one percent nationally. He's clearly saying things that touch a chord in the Republican base and even beyond the Republican base. I mean, one of the things I think Trump supporters can say is. He's potentially expanding the party. If he's bringing in independents and other people who haven't voted Republicans, that would be a good thing for the Republican Party. But, but ultimately, I mean, we saw this last night in the discussion of the nuclear triad. Donald Trump had no idea what, what was being asked. Marco Rubio had to sort of walk him through it. On, on other exchanges, uh, Trump just clearly didn't know what he was talking about in a way that I think virtually every other candidate on the stage did that's a problem was particularly in my view when you're right. talking about mm-hmm. these kinds of issues and 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 th- this tremendous jihadist threat that we're seeing can okay, I mean, let me ask you about the uh, the thing that, that Donald said about uh, not running as a third party candidate i i think that was a pretty firm definitive statement but our our mutual friend tucker carlson was on here earlier openly laughed when i suggested that was shermanesque I think it was a firm statement. I just don't think it means much. I mean, you know, look at look at what Donald Trump Trump has had positions on every side of every issue in the past. He's he said things. You know, he he said before the CNN debate that he might boycott it if he wasn't given five million dollars for for wounded warriors. He said the same thing before the previous debates. He didn't do it. Uh, I, I think it's Tucker's right. It's hard to take any any pledge like that that Donald Trump makes particularly seriously. But don't you realize when you sit there and you say that with 40% of people following him, you're kind of also insulting the people that actually see them, see him as a potential presidential, as a potential president. How does that help right now? I mean, if, if Trump was to fall out, of, fall out, that's 40% of people that are going to be disenfranchised, and you might risk not showing up on election day no, for no, whoever. I mean, I'm sorry. They're not, 40% of people aren't going to be disenfranchised if Donald Trump loses. They can vote for somebody else, so they can choose to stay home. You're not disenfranchised if your favorite candidate is, doesn't prevail. I mean, we that's, saw that that's in like 2012. That that's why dis- we lost. Disenfranchised that that Barack Obama won. People aren't disenfranchised if you vote. You have the franchise. Uh, look, I mean, it, it's a valid point for Trump supporters to say, you know, you risk losing people 40 percent or 38 percent in the Washington Post poll or what have you, who would be sub- Trump supporters, and that could keep you from bil- beating Hillary Clinton if Donald Trump is not any nominee. That's a fair argument i just don't think i think we're so we're we're nearly two months away from casting votes six weeks away from casting votes the idea that the that the republican base now has to suddenly rally around donald trump i just think that's preposterous i I think i think there's a good debate going on i think we just saw a little bit of that debate going on right now thank you steve i appreciate you dropping by